Well, there I am, a very average runner, getting my rear end handed to me in an elite sports performance lab. Stepping into an exercise physiology lab as an everyday runner, I was bracing for surprises, and trust me, they weren't in short supply. From my own performance, to some surprising truths about heart rate monitors. Now, running has always been more than just a sport to me. It's been a journey, a challenge, and at times, a real struggle. I do see myself as a lifelong runner, but for me, running fits differently into different seasons of life. I'm not one of those people who, no matter what life throws at them, keeps running as a constant source of stability and almost comfort. I kind of find myself in the opposite camp. Although I'm somehow this kind of running guy here on YouTube, as soon as life gets hard, stressful, or otherwise unbalanced, rightly or wrongly, my own running is usually one of the first things that gets pushed right off the weekly schedule. Right now, I'm making a gradual return to regular running after being sporadic at best with it over the last few years. While we all navigated the chaos since 2020, Holly and I got married in the, well, at the fourth attempt, and we jumped headlong into parenthood. As part of me getting serious about my running again, I really wanted to get some sort of objectivity about quite how much fitness I've lost and where I'm truly at right now in terms of my running. That's exactly why, not being one to do things by halves, I booked a VO2 max test and blood lactate test at the Human Performance Unit two hours down the road at the University of Essex. Okay, so we're going to start the test yeah. in three, two, one, on you go. You might think this kind of lab testing is reserved for elite athletes, not 265 pounds, out of shape, dare I say, middle-aged men rocking the dad bod. But here we are. I knew that especially given how much I talk about heart rate training on this channel, the least I could do to help myself was to get some proper scientific data to set my heart rate zones as accurately as possible. But there was also an ulterior motive to doing this test. Just in case the team of exercise physiologists at the uni didn't already think I was a weirdo turning up with a cameraman, I wanted to be put through their standard performance testing for runners, but wearing two different heart rate monitors simultaneously. Regular viewers on the channel will know that I've been testing the new armband style heart rate monitor from Coros, as well as their Pace 3 watch. I'm really enjoying the comfort of the armband, but there's one recurring theme both in the comments and in my mind. Given that the Coros heart rate monitor is an optical sensor on the upper arm and not a traditional chest strap monitoring your heart's electrical signals, how accurate can it really be? The huge consensus in the running community seems to be that if you're going to get serious about heart rate training at all, you need a chest strap. No two ways about it. So, given that one system is optical and the other is electrical, meaning they wouldn't conflict with one another, I wanted to wear the two together on this test and see the resulting differences in the data quality for myself. The test setup is pretty daunting, as anyone who's done this kind of ramp protocol will be able to tell you. After a warm up, I found myself back on the treadmill, wearing a harness, the face mask to analyze the air I was breathing in and out. You can get it uh, sort of nestled however it's comfortable for you on your face. Mm -hmm. I'm now gonna just spot inside. At this point, the double heart rate monitor situation was the least of my worries. As anxious as I was about doing it, the test protocol is pretty simple. I had to run as many three minute reps as I could with 30 seconds rest in between each rep to allow the team to collect a sample of blood from my earlobe to do blood lactate analysis. Sounds easy enough, right? But of course there's a catch. The speed of the treadmill increased by one kilometer per hour for every three minute rep, starting nice and easy at eight kilometers per hour. The heart rate data was collected throughout, the gas analysis and the blood lactate analysis in combination would give the team of exercise physiologists enough data to determine my heart rate zones and various different thresholds to help me train with heart rate more effectively. Just as a quick reminder, VO2 max is like your body's horsepower, a figure that reveals the maximum amount of oxygen you can utilize during exercise. It's a key indicator of your endurance capabilities. Blood lactate, on the other hand, tells us about your lactate threshold, the point at which your body starts struggling to clear the lactate in your bloodstream during intense activity. It's crucial for understanding how to train smarter, not just harder. To begin with, once I was used to running with the mask on, which wasn't anywhere near as claustrophobic as it looks, running at eight, then nine, then 10 kilometers per hour felt very comfortable. I was definitely running within my comfort zone. 
After all, 10 kilometers per hour is six minutes per K, or roughly 10 minutes per mile, which is roughly where I'd normally do most of my easy zone two runs at this point. But oh boy, it didn't take long for life to get a lot harder. As the treadmill got faster and faster with every three minute rep up to 14 kilometers per hour, which having done the math after the fact, I now realize is three hour marathon pace. Two, one, position. Call it there, James. You're right. Just start the next. Start the next one. Yeah. See how you get on. Good man. <laughs> okay, remember, same position when you cut enough, okay? Five, four, three, two, one. Next day. <laughs> Yeah, it felt quick. As the treadmill sped up, rather unsurprisingly, so did my heart rate. Each three minute increase in pace brought a new challenge. And it wasn't just the speed, it was the anticipation, the curiosity of how my body will react and what story the data will tell. The chorus armband snug on my arm and the polar chest strap tied across my chest were both just there silently recording every single heartbeat. But here's where things took a slightly unexpected turn. I knew that there'd be a difference in data between the two heart rate monitors, but I didn't expect what I saw upon reviewing the data. One of the two heart rate monitors produced a very stable set of data throughout the test, whereas the other showed glitches, spikes and dips that honestly had and still have me asking some awkward questions and reevaluating some beliefs. But more on the heart rate monitor head to head in a moment. After the physical push comes the analytical bit. Here in the calm after the storm, I'm reviewing the results of the test. It's a revealing look of where I stand after a challenging couple of years. The VO2 max and lactate threshold numbers are more than just metrics, they're kind of signposts on my road back to fitness. Due to the fact that I'm on medication for high blood pressure and that I've got a family history of some heart issues, the team didn't want to let me go to all out exhaustion like they might do with an elite athlete. So I'm not putting too much faith in the VO2 max figure shown. But the heart rate training zones, lactate and anaerobic threshold figures are great data for me to work with. They're using a four zone heart rate training model and I've set my zone two endurance zone as being between 106 and 153 beats per minute with my lactate threshold at 153 beats per minute and my anaerobic threshold at 169 beats per minute. The bottom line with this is that I've got a fair bit more wiggle room in my pacing when it comes to training endurance than I thought. If anything, capping my long, easy runs at the high 130s or low 140s in terms of beats per minute, as I have been, is potentially holding me back a little bit. I could be working harder on those easy runs while still improving my endurance. To get the most out of this type of testing, I need to view this test as a, a kind of before test, an opportunity to put a line in the sand. I now need to go and train using this data and come back for a retest in six months time or so. That's when we're really gonna see and be able to quantify the improvements. Now, back to that head to head between the two heart rate monitors. This chart tells you pretty much everything you need to know. The data plotted on the red and blue lines are the five second averages for heart rate, measured simultaneously throughout the test. The blocks at the bottom of the chart are the three minute bouts of exercise that get faster as we go from left to right. And you can see the polar chest strap in red and the Coros armband in blue. Before I started running with the armband a few weeks ago, if you'd shown me this graph without a color key and asked me which was which, I would have guessed the opposite results. In line with what seems to be the common wisdom in the running world, I believed that the chest strap data was unquestionably going to be more reliable. But having run with the armband for a while now, the stability you can see from the blue line, the Coros heart rate data, doesn't really surprise me. What I am shocked about though, is how the hardware considered gold standard by most people, the polar chest strap is wildly unstable. Obviously this is an N equals one, one time, one man experiment. I'd be silly not to point that out, but it makes you think, right? 
This test at the University of Essex was more than just an assessment, it was a wake-up call. As I look at these results, I see not just numbers, but a start line for a new chapter in my running. The goal for the coming year is now really, really clear. I'm aiming to get back to marathon fitness in general. I can't really be more specific as our family plans with a second baby arriving in February mean that realistically, I'm not going to be committing to training for a specific spring marathon on a specific date in a specific city. But I want to get the mileage back in my legs to be marathon ready in 2024. The long-term goal of running sub three has never felt further away than it does right now but I do have some solid data now to work with in terms of heart rate zones. I know that the road ahead won't be easy. It's about consistency, building up my aerobic fitness and getting back to a healthier weight, but with the right approach, I'm confident. Thanks to Coros for their support in sponsoring this and recent videos on the channel and for providing me with a tool that's really now proving its worth. Remember, this was a single test, a snapshot of a single day in the lab, yet it's given some invaluable insights into not just heart rate monitors, but also my own fitness as it currently stands. Onwards and upwards.